Hello everyone. What is power over Ethernet? This is what we are going to talk about in this video. Power over Ethernet, also known as PoE, is a technology developed by Cisco in 2000 that allows Ethernet cable to transmit data and power at the same time. In simple words, PoE is a standard for delivering DC power to networking devices such as VoIP phones, wireless access points, and IP security cameras over the copper wires in an Ethernet cable. The main purpose of PoE is to eliminate the need for separate power supplies and electrical outlets. In addition to that, PoE cuts the expense of installing additional electrical wiring, which requires professional electrical engineers to ensure that all the rules and regulations are followed. So this is what basically PoE is all about. Now let's go a little more deeper into it and see how it really works. The way power over Ethernet works is simple. Ethernet cable has 4 twisted pairs of copper wires inside, so having total 8 wires. In CAD 5 and older versions of Ethernet cable, 4 wires were used to transmit the data, but the remaining 4 wires were not used. So first power over Ethernet standards initially took the advantage of 4 unused wires to transmit the power. While with the new PoE standards, all 8 wires were used to transmit the power. Here we have a CAT5 cable with 8 wires. If we attach RJ45 connector to it, pins and wires 1, 2, 3 and 6 are used to transfer the data. Pins and wires 4, 5, 7 and 8 are used to transfer the power. Data and power transmissions do not interfere with one another because Ethernet uses differential signaling. Ok now for power over Ethernet to work, electrical current and data must go into an Ethernet cable and it should be connected to a power sourcing equipment or PSE. What PSE does is supply DC power and data to a power device or PD through a twisted pair Ethernet cable. So in this scenario, PSE is a PoE switch and power device is a VoIP phone. When we plug an Ethernet cable into the switch, it will start sending data and power to the phone. So this phone doesn't need a separate power supply because it is getting power from the switch through an Ethernet cable. Okay, now what would happen if we plug an Ethernet cable to a non-PoE switch? So in this case, nothing would happen. Because this non-PoE switch only sends data, not power, through this Ethernet cable. But this phone needs both power and data to work properly. However, there is a way to send data and power to this phone without replacing a switch. This can be done by deploying a PoE injector. PoE injector makes a non-PoE switch compatible with a PoE capable power device. PoE injector is placed between a non-PoE switch and a PoE power device. PoE injector adds power to the Ethernet cable when we plug it into an electrical socket. So this phone starts working after getting DC power from the injector and data from the switch. Now keep in mind, power over Ethernet technology sends data and power over an Ethernet cable for a maximum distance of 100 meter. However, PoE extender is used to extend a network beyond the basic 100 meter distance limit. Extender joins networks that span large distances in hotels, shopping malls, businesses and so on. Ok now what are power over Ethernet standards? PoE standards are broken down into four types which vary based on power capacity. The original PoE standard IEEE 802.3 AF was released in 2003. Now rebranded as Type 1, it delivers up to 15.4 watts of DC power to each port of the device. Over the time, newer devices required more power, so a new standard IEEE 802.380, also known as PoE Plus R Type 2, was created in 2009, bumping the maximum power to 30 watts. That was sufficient power for devices such as IP phones, wireless access points and security cameras, but not good enough for technology like flat screen displays, LED lighting or POS terminals. To meet the demand for high power, IEEE released a new PoE standard 802.3BT at the end of 2018 to push the maximum power even higher. It has different names such as PoE++, Ultra PoE and 4-pair PoE. 
this standard is further broken down into two types type 3 and type 4 Type 3 can deliver up to 60 watts to connected devices providing power over 4 pairs of wires compared to the previous technology's ability to power just over 2 pairs. Type 4 can deliver up to 100 watts from the PoE switch to power devices. The rise of more powerful IEEE 802.3 BT standard has paved the way for more power-hungry applications such as LED lighting, security card readers, intercoms, laptops, and so on. Types of power over Ethernet It has two types, active and passive. Active PoE provides a safety mechanism for power devices. With active PoE, PSE performs a power check called a handshake before power is delivered. If the handshake is completed, PoE switch starts sending power, which triggers the power device to start up. If that handshake is not completed for any reason, PSE never sends any power and there is no danger of power devices being fried by incoming power. With passive PoE, electricity is passed to power devices immediately without a compatibility check. It constantly sends electrical current to the connected device. For this reason, it's not a good idea to use a passive PoE. It can damage the device permanently. Finally, what are the benefits of power over Ethernet? Cost savings Ethernet can carry both power and data, so you don't need to spend money to install electrical wiring and power sockets. Safety PoE automatically stops current flows if there is a service interruption. Data speed PoE can deliver data at 1 gigabit per second. Flexibility Without being connected to wall adopters, Devices can be positioned in ideal locations and be easily repositioned if moved. Scalability There are no worries about hooking into electrical outlets. Having power available on the network means that the installation and distribution of network connections are simple and effective. Finally, Reliability POE power can be backed up by a UPS allowing for continuous operation even during power failures. Power over Ethernet also allows for devices to be easily disabled or reset from a centralized controller. Alright, so this brings me to the end of my topic. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you really did, please subscribe for more videos.